Arizona Wildlife Views, brought to you by the sale of hunting and fishing licenses and the Heritage Fund, lottery dollars working for wildlife. Some projects made possible by the Sport Fish and Wildlife Restoration Fund. Good evening and welcome to Arizona Wildlife Views. I'm your host, Jim Harkin. This is my buddy, Dixie. Hey, Dixie. As you can tell, she loves to come out in the field with us. Golden Retrievers are just one of the many different breeds of sporting dogs that you'll meet in our first segment this evening. And trust me, they all love being out in the field with their masters. Sporting dogs are, are dogs that are used to hunt feathered animals and um, they were developed throughout the years in Europe and England and uh, in sporting you, you, you really have four different styles of dogs. You have your setters, you have your pointers, you have your retrievers and you have your spaniels. Your setters were developed by the, the poppers because they were not allowed to hunt in, in England and, and, and in British Isles. Um, only the royalty and the rich could hunt. So what the setters would do is they would go out into the field and get the birds to set or hold and then uh, they would lay down and the, and the peasants would throw a net over them and then they'd capture the birds because they couldn't shoot a gun because of course the landlords would, would hear it. So that's the reason they were developed. The three most common setters found in Arizona are the English setter, the Irish setter, and the Gordon setter. The American Kennel Club also recognizes the Irish red and white setter in the sporting dog category. One of the oldest gun dog breeds, the English setter, is a graceful, there. elegant gun right dog. Good the bird. English setter Good excels bird. in the show, obedience, and agility rings, as well as in the field. Although similar in function to the Irish and Gordon setters, the English is a distinct breed, differing in personality Facts. and appearance. Their coat is white with an intermingling of darker hairs, resulting in markings that can be orange, blue, tricolor, lemon, and liver. This gentle, affectionate family dog loves to be with its people and does not thrive when isolated in a yard or kennel. Athletic and energetic, they also require daily vigorous exercise either on leash or in a fenced area. Their feathered coat requires regular maintenance, including brushing and clipping. One of the most distinctive sporting breeds, the Irish Setter, is an active, aristocratic bird dog. Over two feet tall at the shoulder, the Irish is equally known for his style, powerful movement, and his clown-like personality. High energy, the Irish requires regular exercise. His outgoing and stable personality makes him a favorite with families. Their long, glossy red coat, although beautiful, must be groomed regularly to prevent snarls or mats. The heaviest of the three setter breeds, the Gordon Setter, was originally bred as a personal bird dog but they are equally at home as companion dogs, obedience competitors, and show dogs. Sturdy and muscular, the Gordon suggests strength and stamina rather than extreme speed while on the move. The breed's distinctive black and tan coat allows it to be found easily in light fields and early snow. Like all setters, regular grooming is also necessary to prevent matting. The pointers were developed um, uh, by the rich people and and what they were for was to go out and get the birds to set and hold and then uh, they would walk up onto them they'd flush the bird and then they'd shoot it 
Pointers are known as hard-driving hunting dogs with courage and stamina that belies their size. They give the impression of power and grace with a noble carriage and a muscular body. There are three pointer breeds recognized by the AKC, the pointer, the German short-haired pointer, and the German wired-haired pointer. The pointer, formerly known as the English pointer, is powerful, graceful, and an aristocrat who carries its head proudly. The pointer has an alert expression and a well-muscled athletic body. The short, sleek, shiny coat comes primarily in white, but may be liver, lemon, black, or orange, either solid, patched, or speckled. The pointer's even temperament and alert good sense make him a congenial companion both in the field and in the home. The breed short coat is easy to care for with minimal effort. A versatile hunter and all-purpose gun dog, the German short-haired pointer possesses a keen nose and high intelligence. The breed is used for many different types of game and sport, including retrieving and pointing pheasant, quail, grouse, waterfowl, raccoons, and even deer. He is a hunting dog by nature. The German short-haired pointer is a medium-sized breed. Their coat can be solid liver or liver and white in color. The German short-haired pointer's short coat does shed, but grooming is minimal then they would uh, hold the pointing dog and then they'd have the retriever go pick up the bird. And um, so they, they had them stylized to do just one function only. The American Kennel Club recognizes six breeds of retriever. The gentle, intelligent, and family-friendly Labrador Retriever continues to be the most popular breed in the United States. Commonly referred to as labs, this versatile hunting breed comes in three colors, yellow, black, and chocolate. An ideal sporting and family dog, the Labrador Retriever thrives as part of an active family and as a trusted hunting companion. A double-coated breed which sheds seasonally, regular grooming keeps his coat at its water-resistant best. They have an excellent, reliable temperament and are superb with children. The Golden Retriever, with its intelligence and eager-to-please attitude, is one of the most popular breeds in the United States. As the mascot of the Wildlife Use television program, Dixie is always there to steal the scene, if not the whole show. For Game & Fish TV, we're on the road quite a bit, and I love traveling with my good buddy Dixie. Today, uh, Dixie, come back. Ah, man's best friend, I tell ya. Most times, though, she can be found in her favorite repose. Golden Retrievers are hunting companions and also make ideal guide, assistance, and search and rescue dogs. The golden colored coat is the hallmark of this versatile breed and can range from light to dark gold. This active and energetic sporting breed can adapt to many different living situations but requires daily exercise. Their water repellent double coat sheds seasonally and needs regular brushing. Then you have your spaniels. Your spaniels are just a, a flushing uh, breed, and they were really uh, developed more on in France and Spain and through there. And what they did um, is they they wouldn't hold the birds. They would just go out and run around and find the birds and flush them. And and the hunter had to be ready for when they came up. And then they would retrieve. Exhibited in the United States since the 1880s, the Cocker has a sturdy, compact body and a silky, flat, or wavy coat. The Cocker is capable of considerable speed and great endurance. Cocker Spaniels can be black, black with tan spots, party colored, or any other solid color. Despite their small size, the Cocker Spaniel is still an active sporting breed that needs daily exercise. His desire to hunt renders him a capable gun dog. He covers territory speedily, flushing game, and retrieving only when under command. Regular brushing and trim every few months helps keep the coat free of mats. Three more breeds are commonly found afield in Arizona. The Vishla, Weimaramer, and the Brittany. Originally called the Brittany Spaniel, it is now referred to simply as the Brittany as its hunting style more closely resembles that of pointing breeds. The Brittany is a medium-sized, leggy, dual-purpose dog, equally suited for sport and companionship. The Brittany has earned great popularity among millions of hunters because of its moderate size, which allows hunters to transport them easily. 
Because of its jolly character, it is also popular as a companion dog. Its dense, flat, or wavy coat can be orange and white or liver and white in either clear or rowan patterns. Regular brushing is important, but their shorter coats need minimal maintenance. Originally from Hungary, the Vishla is a medium-sized, short-coated hunting dog that is essentially pointer in type, although he combines characteristics of both pointer and retriever. The Vishla represents one of the best in sporting dogs and loyal companions and has a strong claim to being one of the smallest of the all-round pointer retriever breeds. The Vishla is a natural hunter endowed with a good nose and an above average trainability. Although he sheds, his short coat requires low daily maintenance. Often referred to as the Grey Ghost because of the distinctive color of its short, sleek coat, the Weimaraner is a graceful dog with aristocratic features. Bred for speed, good scenting ability, courage, and intelligence, he remains an excellent game hunter. The Weimaraner is a pointer and an all-around personal hunting dog. Rather than having a specific purpose such as pointing or flushing, the Weimaraner is an all-purpose gun dog. Grooming maintenance is low due to his short coat. The Weimaraner is an incredible hunter and a fearless guardian of his family and territory. With all the different dog breeds out there, I'm sure you'll find one that's just right for you. Along with all the wild places in Arizona, our state boasts quite an assortment of wonderful parks, including one in Chandler, where the fishing is good. It's fall in Arizona. Okay, it still feels like summer, but the calendar says it's September, and that means Mr. Whiskers is back in town. Over 13,000 pounds of catfish are being stocked in urban lakes throughout the valley of Tucson, all to the delight of local anglers. This first stocking is channel catfish, but uh, within the next couple of months, we'll also introduce what we call the resident warm water fish population. And so that's gonna mean some four to six inch largemouth bass and some three and four inch bluegill. Whenever we start a new fishery, we have to start with young fish because there's just small food items for them to feed on. By the time a year comes around though, some of these fish will have reached adulthood and begin to reproduce, particularly the bass and the bluegill, and begin to form the, the baseline of a solid fishery, but we have to be a little patient. We can't expect to catch big fish all at once. These channel cats have come a long way, over 1,200 miles from a farm in Arkansas. Urban fishing program manager Eric Swanson made the trip with them earlier this year and was amazed at everything involved in bringing catfish to Arizona. It's actually quite a logistical adventure for these catfish to come all the way from their source here into Arizona. We have contractors that are based in Arkansas. The catfish are grown in large acres and acres of farm ponds, and they grow, it takes about 20 months to grow this two pound size fish we have. And then the fish are netted and gathered up, loaded into these trucks, and they have a 36 hour journey. I had the chance to accompany the drivers this last spring, and uh, it's quite an ordeal uh, logistically to keep a live load of fish that long in, in such great healthy condition as we see here today. Urban fishing may be new to some residents, but the program has been in existence since 1984, and it's a great way to hook into an exciting outdoor sport. The urban fishing program, uh, our, our motto is that if people can't get to the fish, we bring fish to the people. And that's really what it's all about. In today's time of, of, of harder economic times, the high prices of fuel and the limited available time, by bringing fish into communities where people live, uh, we provide this great ch chance to catch fish, good quality fish, have a lot of fun with your kids and your family and your friends in a nice safe park setting uh, within a very convenient drive of your home. In fact, this location, the brand new Veterans Oasis Park in Chandler, is the latest park to join the urban fishing program, and this was its first stocking of catfish. The park also offers many amenities for visitors, all designed to help them better connect with the natural world. Yeah, this park gives kids and their parents lots of opportunities to get outside um, between walking the four and a half miles of trails. Um, a lot of people have been coming here to ride their bicycles, 
And now that we've got fish, uh, there's just one more reason to get outside. And in addition to that, we've also got a lot of really neat programs going on for the children of all ages, preschool classes. Uh, we've got a, a nature day camp coming up next week. There it is. It was a bat. This class for preschoolers and their parents included a nature quiz, craft activity, and story time, all centered around bats and Halloween. She swallowed the owl to shush the bat, but I don't know why she swallowed a bat. Imagine that. In addition to activities at the Environmental Education Center, such as programs and classes having anything to do with the environment, we offer exhibits so people can learn to interpret for themselves a little bit better of the Sonoran Desert. A lot of people will come out here and look for birds or look at birds, and some people don't know what they're looking at, so we'll help people interpret that. They can come in and ask questions. We've got field guides and, and lots of people who know what they're talking about. This 113-acre park complete with a five-acre lake, is the latest in a local park system whose goal is to enhance the lives of people who call Arizona home. So how are the freshly transplanted catfish taking to their new pond? We're real pleased with the stocking today. The water quality checked out really well. These fish are really strong and healthy. They're going in this water uh, active and energetic. And we see them come up to the surface and do what I call a tail flip and they're kind of decompressing and adjusting the gases in their air bladders and adjusting to that new environment. And that's always a great sign for us to see them uh, so, so actively adjusting to their new environment. So uh, great successful stocking today. Veterans Oasis Park is located at the corner of Chandler Heights Road and Lindsay Road in the Southeast Valley. And this new lake is a great addition to the other urban waters already being enjoyed by the public. Urban Fishing Program is a statewide program. We have 16 waters in uh, the Maricopa County area, four in Tucson, and a nice cool one up in Payson. To pay and support this program, anglers that are age 14 and over need to buy an urban fishing license. It's a great value, it's a great experience, and as you see today, we've got some awesome fish for you. Today, the Arizona Wildlife Viewing Guide takes us south to Tucson, where a park with a natural spring is a draw to humans as well as wildlife. Nestled in the northeast side of Tucson is Agua Caliente Park. It's located on the east side of Tucson near Soldier Trail and uh, Tanca Verde. Covering roughly 100 acres, this oasis features a natural spring which feeds the main pond. And we all know that water is a very important resource here in the southwest because there aren't a lot of water sources. And the fact that there is this unique spring located right here at this site has drawn people to this area for, um, throughout history, including Native Americans, and then we had some individuals who came here to homestead in the mid-1800s. And then also wildlife are attracted to this area because of the water resource. Anything from the turtles and fish that live here on site to other larger mammals and birds that come to this area. We met environmental education manager Carol Tepper on the trail as she tells a tour group about the original habitat type found here. The pond here is not the original habitat. The original habitat was a sheet of water coming out from the spring and forming a marsh, sort of what the, the in the Spanish word it's a cienega. So it was a wetland here, very native, uh, rare kind of habitat that we used to have all around Tucson, little patches of cienegas and marshes, but they've mostly been destroyed over time. Family picnics are a favorite activity, as are photography, painting, and of course bird watching. Agua Caliente Park is one of the designated wildlife viewing areas in Arizona, and it's an important area for wildlife. People also like to come to this park, generally to picnic, but also we hold environmental education programs here. Now we're gonna Talk about some other animal life. We'll focus on the birds a little bit as we go along the edge here. Where they can come and learn about the wildlife and about the history of the park. Just about every type of waterfowl that visits or inhabits southern Arizona can be found there at one time or another. So notice these little black and white ducks with the yellow eyes? Those are called the ring neck duck. 
but you don't really see the ring around the neck very well unless you've got them in hand. It's kind of a light purple ring. I think they should be called a ring bill duck uh -huh. because they have that white ring around their bill. They're a diving duck, and that's why they're not up here, you know, on the ground looking for food, foraging for food, because they don't fly very well. They're kind of heavy bodied, and they dive down all the way under the water to eat. Uh, whatever food they can find on the bottom of the pond, as opposed to these ducks, which are dabbling ducks. They just dabble, they, they tip over, but they don't usually go all the way under. So two different ways of feeding. But the little ringneck ducks sure are cute. These, of course, are mallards. These, uh, the green-headed males with the yellow bills, those are very brightly colored and kind of iridescent. And then the females are kind of a dull brown. And that's, of course, um, so that they can be camouflaged when they're nesting on the ground because a lot of ducks nest on the ground so they don't want to be seen by predators so being a plain mottled brown like that is good. So that's what we call dimorphic when um, the male and female have very different forms and so ducks are very dimorphic. The male and female hardly look at, uh, alike at all. But they do sort of have the same sort of shape. So we've got mostly mallards here. Oh there's also a one with the white stripe on his head, that little guy, he's swimming away from us now. He's a little smaller than the mallards. Um, that's a widgeon, the American widgeon. And we'll talk more about the widgeons and other ducks in, a little bit later. There's even a resident pintail duck with an identity crisis. He sort of thinks he's a mallard and hangs out with them. And um, he comes every year. <laughs> they have a little bit more of a long, uh, graceful neck than the other ducks do. Very beautiful duck. Many terrestrial birds are found in the park, including Gila woodpeckers, cactus wrens, curve-billed thrashers, doves, and owls. Due to the diversity of the park's vegetation and its water, many different animal species claim the park as their year-round home. And of course, many more animals choose Agua Caliente as their winter home. The native uh, amphibian we have is the spadefoot, uh, which is um, kind of like a toad, but not exactly a toad. During the dry times, they burrow under the ground and surround themselves with a coating of, I think it's saliva or some kind of sticky wet stuff that keeps their moisture in. And then they wait um, until the rain comes and then they come out and breed. Uh, there's also red spotted toads here and I think those are the main um, amphibians. We also have reptiles like the slider, which I think Sandy's going to put them in the scope or maybe already has. If anybody would like to see the sliders, they are right there on the shore. They're a, a non-native turtle, but they're quite extensive throughout this park and throughout the world, actually. These are the most popular um, pet turtles around the world, and so people all over the world have uh, released their pets, and so they've become widespread uh, released into the wild. And they do get quite, quite big. Um, here's another uh, turtle that we sometimes see around here, the spiny-nosed softshell turtle. It's a so it does have a big, flat, soft shell that is kind of leathery, and it's a carnivorous turtle. It'll prey on, on little baby ducks and other things like that. And then we have native turtles, the Sonoran mud turtle. So I believe that's also a rare or uh, species of concern. Those are protected. So those are some of the, the reptiles and amphibians that we have here at the park as well. Some of the park's mammals include gray fox, skunks, bobcats, ringtails, raccoons, javelina, mule deer, desert cottontail, and even an occasional mountain lion. Next time you're in Tucson, drop in at Agua Caliente Park and enjoy the wildlife found there. The park also includes an historic ranch house, an art gallery, as well as guided nature walks. Are you looking to try something a little bit different? Then head out to the Ben Avery Clay Target Center in Phoenix and check out the new five stand Clay Target experience. There you go. I stand, it's a really fun activity to participate in. It's an activity that we can do on a small scale, on a small piece of property, as opposed to when we looked at sporting clays where we have an actual large area.
basically the way the game is played for five stand is you have five stations on the facility or on the on the field uh, hence the name five stand and you shoot a different set of target presentations uh, it's all based off of the menu that's placed in the front of the targets so you have a menu that gives you what station you're on what uh, presentation that you're going to shoot and what how you're going to shoot that so for instance this is station five you're going to shoot a single from from target one you're going to shoot a report pair from targets three and four and you're going to shoot a true pair from target six and seven so of those presentations, you're going to have an opportunity to shoot those for a total of 25 shots at the completion of the whole menu. And that's our show for this evening. If you have any questions about anything you saw on the show, go to our website at azgfd.gov. On behalf of producers Carol Lind, Gary Schaefer, well, and my buddy Dixie here, I'm Jim Harkin. We'll see you next time. Good girl.